What's going on English 108 online? Uh, nothing too elaborate today in the mini lecture, but uh, just wanted to sort of catch up with you all and give you a sense of where we're at right now in the semester and where I see us heading over the next couple of weeks. So as you know, um, you have just finished up your instructions assignment and you know that's a really pivotal assignment in this class and the things that I really want you to take away from that assignment are this. Um, one is that instructions can really range from just functional to optimal and uh, our ability to get those instructions from merely functional to optimal is really what being a good technical writer is all about. And to do that we have to think really critically about our audience, their needs, their task, and all of the things that we can do to facilitate that process. So, and that was really the, uh, the basis for most of my feedback to you all was that everybody produced functional instructions. Everybody could really get somebody from point A to point B. But what we really have to do as technical writers is to reach deep into our toolkit and look at all of the things that we can leverage or marshal to get our reader where they need to be. Certainly a lot of that has to do with our language and our ability to command language and to provide clarity and precision through language. So making sure that we're explaining things in the clearest, most useful way possible. Uh, but part of that is also in terms of formatting and layout and just thinking about how we can put that language on the page in the most accessible, useful way possible. Certainly the third component of that is the use of uh, visual cues and aids. Um, that, you know, that really takes two forms. One is what can we do typographically, what can we do visually to make sure that the reader understands the magnitude and the significance of what they're doing. And then part of that is also making sure that we integrate images in the most useful way possible. That's another really common uh, piece of advice I give to people as they move their instru instructions along that spectrum is, you know, it's great that you're incorporating images into your work but or visuals into your work, but let's make sure that we're doing that in the most optimal way possible. Let's make sure that we're getting the most traction action or mileage that we can out of those visual aids. And ultimately, if you do those things, uh, you're going to be in a really good spot. So remember, functional is, is just average, but optimal is where we want to get people to go. It, it, it makes things safer, it makes things more efficient, it leads to better and more consistent results, and in the workplace, those are the things that we're after. So if you can write really good instructions, that's going to help you in the workplace. The other thing that I want you to remember uh, are just the three core moves, staging, coaching, and alerting. If you can remember those three things and you can check those off confidently when you're writing an instructional document, you're going to be in a really good spot. Um, so, you know, set the stage for success, coach the reader, don't just direct them, and use conspicuous and timely alerts. And uh, really, if you truly, if you can remember those things and, and take those things away from this class, you'll be ahead of most writers uh, when it comes to producing effective instruction. Of course, the other added uh, assignment uh, since the last time we talked uh, is the fact sheet assignment. And of course, the fact sheet assignment is uh, a challenge. It's, it's, your ch it's your chance to take a relatively technical and specialized content, uh, in this case about health and safety related issues, and condense it and translate it and present it in a way that a reader would actually read. And, you know, I think I've alluded to this before, but this assignment came from a real-world application. Occasionally, I get asked to go, uh, to go into workplaces and teach technical and professional writing. And one of those workplaces was Central Maine Power. And one of the challenges that they were confronted with was that their safety coordinators were, were routinely asked to produce these safety briefing documents. And these documents were meant to educate the workforce about health or safety related issues that they were seeing uh, pretty regularly and to try to prevent them. And one thing that they realized was that these, these documents were difficult to write and that they weren't being read as closely or as well as people had hoped. And so we had to have a really close conversation and a really open conversation about well, what should go on these sheets and how should that information go on these sheets. And what we found was that generally they weren't written in very context specific ways. So they were written in a really general way. They weren't written to linemen or line people. Um, and so that's one thing I really want you to think about as you work on your fact sheets is how can I make this context specific? Rather than casting a huge net and writing about stuff that could apply to any work place, how can you bring this to the specific day-to-day -day life and activities of those uh, in your workplace? So rather than writing about slips, trips, and falls in general, what does that look like in the electrical field? What does that look like in the culinary field? And so when we can write in a context-specific way, what we're doing is we're finding a way to make that content intersect with the lives of our actual readers. And ultimately, that's what we want to be doing. So I want you to think really carefully about that. The other thing that we found was that, you know, there was a lot of unnecessary information being presented. So, you know, one of the things that we have to ask ourselves as uh, communicators in a workplace is, what is truly essential? 
What does our reader really need to know to put this information into action? One of the most important decisions that we make as writers on a day-to-day -day basis is what not to include. Um, and so one of the things that you have to really uh, create is a habit of mind uh, and an editorial framework where you're asking yourself, does this, does this information or this content or this word or this language or this image, does it help me accomplish my goal? And if it doesn't, then you need to have uh, the wherewithal to pull that out. Because when we introduce too much information into a document, what we're ultimately doing is creating noise or distraction around the things that really matter. And then finally, what we found was that the documents just weren't designed or, or laid out or formatted in a way that was really useful. So we've done this all semester, and I want you to continue to think about this. And this is one of the real key challenges or, or learning moments in this assignment, is how can I strategically and intentionally put this information on the page such that somebody will be able to read it rapidly, but also comprehend it and understand it and make use of it. So we're thinking about the same things we've been thinking about all semester. We're thinking about crap. We're thinking about hats, meaning uh, we're thinking about headings, access. So can somebody access the document? We're thinking about typography. Um, we're thinking about space. So how can we use how can we use white space to make the page look inviting uh, and engaging? We're certainly thinking about you know using those really strong headings to draw the reader in and to compartmentalize the information. And so uh, I realize that this assignment is a challenge because it's layering a whole new um, sort of framework in, which is uh, an information literacy framework. So can you go out into the wild, wild west of the World Wide Web and can you find useful, meaningful, credible, authoritative, up-to-date information and integrate that into your work? And so I realize that's a challenge and I hope that some of the tools that I've shared with you um, have allowed you to access the types of information that you want uh, because in, in the workplace you know one of our responsibilities as professionals is to be utilizing the best information we can possibly get our hands on so certainly one of the outcomes of this course is that I want you to be in more com in better command of your language to be more thoughtful about your language to be able to present information clearly and precisely and we've been working on that but really one of the responsibilities of a good writer is to be able to go out and find high quality information against which to make decisions with which to make arguments uh, and to educate and so that's really part of this too so as I look at your fact sheet assignments I'm going to be paying close attention to the quality uh, the appropriateness um, the context uh, specificity of your information and those are the those are the standards against which I'm going to hold you so I hope that that really um, uh, clarifies a little bit what I'm looking for the and then you know here we are Thanksgiving week and I hope that folks are that are behind or a little bit behind are getting caught up and uh, as soon as Thanksgiving week is over, uh, we're, we're going to start uh, moving right along into our final assignment of the semester, which is a recommendation report. So I'll forecast that a little bit here, and then I'll sign off. But a recommendation report, or at least in the context of this class, is you as a writer solving a problem for a particular reader. So there's going to be an array of scenarios that you can um, respond to, but here, here are a couple of examples. Um, one is you're, an IT, you're the IT or the information technology director uh, for a local school district, and so this would apply for folks who are in the IT field, um, and you, your school district has won a grant, and so now your superintendent is planning to buy uh, tablets for seventh and eighth grade students, and so your job as the IT director is to go find three tablets that would work, and then ultimately to uh, suggest one for adoption. So which one do you think works the best? And so your job is to compile this information into a report, show the superintendent what the three options are, why they fit the bill, and then ultimately argue for the best one. Another scenario is that uh, the general manager of a local auto parts delivery service is looking to replace their fleet of cars, and your job is to go out and to uh, recommend which car you think would make the most sense given the application. And, and in each of the scenarios, as you'll see when I uh, assign this, um, next week uh, has some key details. In this instance, uh, a lot of highway driving, uh, consistent use in inclement weather, has to be uh, inexpensive to buy, own, and operate. And so your job, again, would be to go out to find three viable options and then ultimately recommend which one you think uh, works the best. This is going to be our first uh, sort of foray into writing a, a longer form report. So we're going to have to think carefully about how to structure a report, how to integrate data, uh, how to present information in meaningful ways. One of the things that you'll see about all of these scenarios next week is that none of these, uh, none of the intended audiences for these reports is an expert in that particular field. So with the superintendent, you're writing to somebody who frankly doesn't know anything about tablets or uh, technology. Uh, in the case of the auto parts, 
uh, company, you're dealing with somebody who understands the business of auto parts but doesn't understand uh, the ins and outs of choosing the right vehicle for this application. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for you to uh, bring your knowledge to bear, uh, to explain things, to share the significance of things, to focus on benefits over features. Uh, features are just those sort of raw data pieces or those you know pieces of jargon. Benefits are the ways that they actually impact the reader or the audience. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that and we'll dive into that. But that you know just to let you know, that's the final piece of this semester. So a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, you need to make sure that you're getting your work in on time. You need to make sure that you're submitting it through Blackboard. Uh, you need to make sure that if you're not satisfied with your grade um, on any particular assignment or as a whole, that you're doing something about that. One of the uh, my philosophies about this course is that you're in the driver's seat when it comes to your grade. So if you're not satisfied, you're not happy with where you're sitting in the course right now, um, I challenge you to, to do some revisions, to find an assignment that you could do better on. Um, and uh, make some revisions, resubmit that, and I'm, I'd be happy to, uh, to regrade or reassess that. If you have any questions about anything in the course at all, you shouldn't hesitate to call, text, email, whatever it takes to get in touch with me. Um, I like to be an open book and an open resource to you. I, I want everybody to succeed in this course. Unfortunately, uh, in an online course, I don't get to see and interface with you every day, so sometimes I don't know the challenges that you're being confronted with. I can sort of infer them and occasionally reach out to you just sort of on my intuition, but uh, you need to feel comfortable reaching out to me, and uh, I, I'm certainly uh, willing to make myself a resource uh, to you in any way that makes sense. So, you know, here we are. We've got about four weeks left of the semester, three, three and a half, four weeks, whatever it is. It's not much time regardless of how it shakes out, and uh, we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be successful in the course. That includes making sure that we're doing all the requisite readings, making sure that we're, uh, you know, reading the checklist closely, and certainly making sure that we are uh, taking feedback in this course seriously. So I'll have feedback on your fact sheets posted by Wednesday, then you'll have the weekend to complete those, and we'll kind of start with the final phase of the semester on Sunday night. Uh, so I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Take care.